Hello traders, welcome back to another In-Depth with Chris episode. In today's discussion, we're going to dive into something that many of us already trade and those of us looking to trade might be interested in investigating further. Something that is so powerful that without it, it can cripple multiple industries and economies around the world. And just paying attention to it can be a very good gauge as to how healthy an economy is. We're talking about metals, both base metals, precious metals, ferrous and non-ferrous. We're going to get into all of that and everything that you need to know about trading metals. Let's dive on into it. Good luck. Let's have some fun and learn about metals. The utmost importance of metals for the economy and their role in our everyday lives really can't be overstated enough. As commodities with a broad application, metals enjoy constant high demand. And as traders, that is music to our ears. Let us first talk about the different types of metals on the broad side of things. On the left, we have ferrous metals. And on the right, we have non-ferrous metals. Non-ferrous metals are going to then be broken down into two further categories where we have base and precious metals. Base metals are industrial commodities primarily used for manufacturing, construction, and assembly applications. They tend to oxidize, tarnish, or even corrode over time if exposed to air and moisture. Some popular base metals include copper, iron, aluminum, nickel, lead, zinc, and this list really kind of can go on from here, but these are the main ones. These metals are more abundant in nature, and they are rarely used for jewelry and aren't a good way to store value. Then, as their name suggests on the right-hand side, the precious metals are the more expensive and rare cousins of base metals. They are high-end commodities used for jewelry, fine dinnerware, decorations, or simply as a storage of value. They don't corrode, oxidize, or tarnish, meaning they remain in perfect condition for centuries. Precious metals are also scarcer, which makes them more valuable intrinsically. The more popular precious metals include gold, silver, and platinum, but once again, this list is still larger than this, and we have things on it like palladium, rhodium, and iridium, and this list kind of keeps going on and on, but really, most people are referring to the gold, silver, and platinum categories when they're talking about precious metals. So to summarize the difference between the base and the precious metals, let's just say that base metals are the backbone of the economy due to their critical importance for the industry, while precious metals are valued higher and serve mainly as a storage of wealth. Then back on the left-hand side here, with ferrous metals on the other hand, these are going to be iron-containing metals. And those of you that are you know eagle-eyed, hopefully you caught the no iron on the bottom side of the non-ferrous metals category, but just a little humor to keep us going. But with ferrous metals, they always contain iron. So this is going to be things like cast iron, wrought iron, alloy steel, and carbon steel. Once again, the list is still larger than this, but these are the main ones. And these are going to be things that are also valued, but not to the same degree as precious metals. The ferrous metals category is very comparable to the base metals category in the fact that they are fundamental for many industries and are used due to their tensile strength and durability. They also have magnetic properties. There are various ways to trade metals, including futures contracts, my personal favorite, ETFs, or CFDs. There is also an indirect way to access these markets by owning stocks of, say, mining companies producing these metals or OTC products like mutual funds based on a particular metal. However, the most direct way to trade these metals is going to be the futures market. On the left, we have the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, where we can see that 22 million ounces of gold are traded on a daily basis. Then we have 350 million ounces of silver traded on a daily basis, where our number two runner-up is going to be the Shanghai Gold Exchange, where they are trading a very respectable 6 million ounces of gold a day, as well as 140 million ounces of silver. So basically what this tells us is the CME is still the top dog when it comes to our pressure precious metals trading. This is something that is going to be up to you to decide which exchange you're interested. Perhaps you want to check out both of them, but that's really not ideal in the long run. Either or, now you know the details. Most exchanges offer full, mini, and micro futures contracts. The nice thing about those micro futures contracts is they're very appealing to those of us that are just getting started in trading at the beginning and aren't looking to risk a whole lot of capital. So 
I strongly urge if you're looking to go down the futures path that you check out a, an exchange that is going to offer you micro contracts. Now, bear in mind that base metals are often traded in bulk by larger brokerage houses, institutional trading firms, or industrial giants. This means the markets can often be a bit more volatile than the, the precious metals category. So most people are going to be interested in trading the precious metals. However, if you are interested in trading exotic base metals, you you may want to opt for the London Metal Exchange, otherwise known as the LME. I don't have it listed here as most people are going to be interested in trading precious metals. Everybody loves the allure of trading all of those gold, silver, and, and all of the excessively luxury type of items in the markets. Precious metals are a common tool for portfolio hedging and diversification since they tend to perform well in turbulent market conditions. Also, since they are more resilient and durable, their value will likely remain the same or even increase over time. Precious metals give the biggest number of options for trading and investing. Aside from ETFs, futures and options contracts, stocks, and some OTC instruments, investors can also buy gold and silver in their physical form. This includes buying coins, jewelry, accessories, bullions, bars, collectibles, and other items made from gold, silver, platinum, palladium, etc. The list goes on and on. However, it is worth noting that such investments are also accompanied by delivery, storage, insurance, and other costs if you're looking to buy something in its physical form. But according to estimation, over 19 million ounces of gold and 170 million ounces of silver on average are transferred every day only on just the London market alone. Now let's talk about the price movers. And as with most things in the trading and commodities world, the price of base and precious metals is largely determined by their supply and demand. So the main impactor that we'll start off talking about will be the production and export factors. If the mining technology improves, this will lead to a faster extraction of larger quantities of a specific metal. And this would result in a bigger supply, thus causing a short term or medium term price drop. On the other hand, if mine workers in top metal producing countries go on strike, it will slow exports down and lead to a global supply crunch. The result would be higher prices for this particular metal. The global lockdowns after the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, which destabilized the global supply chains, led to a surge in prices for lithium, a key component for electric vehicle batteries. The disrupted exports from Australia and Latin America, which is the biggest lithium producers in the world, threw the EV industry into chaos, and this led to a massive market reversal. The same thing is now happening with the prices of platinum as well as palladium due to the restrictions that are currently going on in Russia with the Ukraine-Russian conflict. The Russia is often considered the world's leading palladium mining country and the second biggest platinum producer in the world. The next thing we'll talk about is the economic uncertainty. Recession periods, which once again we unfortunately may be experiencing depending on where we live at this point in time, much of the world is, we can experience shrinks in industrial production due to recession periods, and this can lead to lower demand for base metals, and as a result, their prices can drop. At the same time, since many investors consider gold and precious metals safe haven assets or a storage of value, the demand always increases increases when the economy is shaky, and that is why gold prices usually trend upwards when the market is going down. We have an inverse correlator, and that's important to understand. The next thing we'll cover is the geopolitical conflicts. Similar to economic uncertainty, geopolitical stress can also lead to increasing prices of metals. In terms of precious metals, the reason is, once again, the idea of having a shelter for your wealth. In the context of base metals, prices might rise due to potential risk or actual impact on supply chains. Finally, we have strength, well not finally, almost finally, we have strength of the USD. And like most commodities, metals are also dollar denominated. This makes them dependent on the pricing dynamics of the US currency. Usually, when the value of the USD falls, the price of gold Gold goes up and vice versa, that inverse correlational aspect we just mentioned. There is also the purely psychological notion that the price of gold is often sensitive to the overall perceived value of fiat or paper currencies. And then finally, for real, we've got monetary policy. So monetary policy, there is a theory that monetary policies like quantitative easing and interest rate dynamics affect the price of precious metals. 
The reason for interest rates is related to fixed income investors. If interest rate changes take a toll on their yields, they might consider precious metals a viable alternative. However, the stronger link between interest rate changes and the price of metals is the effect on the USD. If interest rate announcements push the dollar higher, the price of precious metals will likely drop. When it comes to quantitative easing, the reasoning is that the money printing policy can depreciate a currency, thus increasing inflation. And precious metals perform well during periods of high inflation. For those interested in entering the metal markets, it's essential to be familiar with the market specifics and the parties that are participating in each metals trading investment. So let's take silver, for example, as it is a precious metal with broad industrial and commercial applications. The combination of these factors make the metal a point of interest to various parties, which include things like mining companies, we have metallurgy and refineries, we have electronic, automobile, and energy sectors all included, we have jewelry industry, we've got institutional investors, and we have, hey, us, the prop trading firm traders. Then we have the retail traders, the traders that are just simply trading out of their house with their own money. This is just a tiny part of the market, and we're only talking about silver itself here, but these are things to be aware of. Regardless of what metal you're interested in trading, it would be advantageous to become intricately familiar with the largest parties involved in whatever particular market you're interested in pursuing. Many market experts consider base metal prices a great benchmark for the state of the global economy. Their prices are closely linked to the outlook for overall economic health since they tend to go up when the economy is in good shape and drop in times of recession due to their tie to industrial use. An interesting fact, economists refer to copper as Dr. Copper at times, joking that it is a metal with a PhD in economics. The basis for such jokes like this is that you can often predict turning points in the global economy only by looking at copper prices. Copper is so reflective of the economy since it is used in just so many industries, from heavy industrial machinery to advanced electronics. And as a result, its demand can be indicative of expansion or contraction in economic output. However, looking at the direction of metal prices alone won't always give you a fair representation of the state of the global economy. It is also essential to consider the rate of the price drops or increases. Small changes can be natural and a result of a particular industry or country-specific event. However, if the drops or hikes are substantial, the signal for a shrinking or growing economy is much, much stronger. So in short, metals can be a phenomenal way to hedge a portfolio due to their ability to inversely correlate what the world economies are doing at times. There's something that have been used since the beginning of time, a representation of power, wealth, and something used to barter and trade for other goods and services. In the world today, there's so many metals, more metals than ever really, that we are now identifying or using. We have crazy metals out there like osmium, which is the rarest metal in the world. And then we have other metals like rhodium, which are trading in 2021 at a high of almost $30,000 an ounce, making it the most valuable metal in the world. But don't jump on that train just yet because the market isn't nearly as liquid as say gold or silver. But until next time, good luck out there. Happy trading metals. I'll see you all very soon. Bzzz.